You're watching Ground Force on BBC America. Village, but like a coiled spring, the Ground Force is waiting for Mary to go off to work in Norwich as normal. She hasn't a clue what's going to happen while she's away. It's all clear, she's gone. It's time for the Ground Force team to move into her garden. This is Bee Orchid Way in the depths of Norfolk, and where once grew bee orchids, now grow new houses with new gardens. In one of them live Mary and Rob Davis. And Mary is an Irish girl from a large family, loves country gardens. We want to try and give her a patch of weeds a makeover with the compliance of her husband Rob and the assistance of her sister Sinead. What a day to do it. Yeah. Couldn't have picked a better one. Well, this is it. Well, I like the view. I like the bit sort of from there up. That's glorious to be able to use that. Um, I'm not sure about this <laughs> at all. But we might be able to use some of these these wildflowers there. Because yeah. it does feel, doesn't it, as though you're really in the middle of the countryside, Rob? Oh, we are. We are, really, yeah. yeah. Um, I have to say that looking at your attire, it doesn't look as if you're going to be much help. Not this morning. I've got to go into work for a few hours, but I'll be back this afternoon. Don't worry about it. Promise. I promise. <laughs> you won't be doing it in those <laughs> shoes. Uh. Now, what about you then, Sinead? Are you going to stay now? I'm here, yeah. In you your Irish first, jersey. Well, I still have to put the plug in. Yeah, yeah no, you're the best bit of green <laughs> in the garden at the moment. <laughs> These are the people who are going to impress you. Charlie works in a nursery. So she's got sort of horticultural expertise. Right. Tommy, he's a builder come landscape contractor, and he does all the sort of heavy stuff. Well, we know a little bit about what you want in here because we sent one of our researchers posing as a kind of nutty academic doing market research. Was Mary fooled? Oh, absolutely. Very, very convincing. Very convincing indeed, yeah. I wanted an old house in the country, a big old house in the country, and Rob wanted a new house in the city. <laughs> and so he finally persuaded me to come and look at it. And um, I came out and I just sort of fell in love with the view right across the countryside. And when you look at the bedroom window, that's all you see. So now, literally, we are looking at the garden yeah. um, and thinking what we can do with it. For our garden, I do feel that I want it, I want it to be an extension of, of what we see behind us. And so it just sort of will blend into one. Instead of having, like, you know, your pansies making the shape of a love heart or something, yeah. it's just wildflowers. So what I've planned for is, is a little square patio at the top alongside the terrace, patio down in that bottom corner which links you with the countryside, and this great sweeping S of turf with wildflowers at either side, sort of native shrubs, so that the whole thing sweeps you down and into that landscape, something like that, does that? Yeah. Do you think she'll like it? I think she'll love it. It's because we're country girls, you see. Yeah. Yeah. I think the idea of a wild garden, she's going to love it. That's a theory, anyway. Yeah. We'll have to see if we can <laughs> turn that into practice. Now, what do you think, then, Rob? Looks great. All right, then. Go to work. OK, I will. Um, we'll go to work. <laughs> <laughs> the budget is just £750 to create a dream wildlife garden from this, just as the builders left it. A little fumitory, a wild flower. Though in this case, it is a weed. All the weed is is any plant growing out of place. But we want it to become a wild flower. And I can do that by digging it up now and moving it out of the way. We're trying, if possible, to keep as many of these wildflowers to put in bits of border so we can move by the wall in the shade and we'll water them in. The first sod has been dug. What we're doing here, we're going to have a raised terraced area here but with uh, bordered with sleepers and then we're going to infill this with a thick solid bed with a gravel tampered into it to give it a nice finish and the two corner pieces will be left with loose gravel. Whatever happened to the work mate? Right, that's great, because we've now got the width of that path, and we can move down the garden with this in an S, pegging either side. It's a good idea to peg out your plan to start with, but perhaps you'd better supply your own pegs and not pinch somebody else's. <laughs> that's short. I think you got out of the wrong side this morning. It's a bit difficult. A bit crouchy. Mm, a bit grumpy. <laughs> The pegs round a patio do more than just mark out its position. They're knocked in until the tops are all the same height, giving a level reference, whatever the lie of the land. If we take this as a level line, run it out there, we can excavate that little ridge there yeah. to drop that to a shallower pitch, and that will show you the face of the sleeper. That's great. Oh, I'm a lot more comfortable with that. I'm glad. 
so am I. If you're right. comfortable, I'm comfortable. <laughs> Magic. If you're comfortable, right. I'm comfortable. We're all comfortable. <laughs> Uh, I'm a bit concerned about this. It, we're bunging all this on that skip. Uh-huh. It's wildlife garden. I mean, any garden, really. We should be having a compost heap here. I suppose so. Somewhere. Really? It doesn't look pretty, but if we can disguise it. Where are we going to put it, then? What Tommy, have you, got, have you got any, any gash timber on the lorry? Uh, we've got three, three old pallets you can use. Could we nail them together to make a compost heap? Yeah, I don't think there'd be a problem with that. Do you want me to go and get them? If you don't mind. OK. Sinead, um, you know all those weeds you put in the skip? Yeah. Would you like to get them out again? There's loads of them. And I'm sorry, it's just that it seems such a waste in a wildlife garden, you know, with all this nature around you to chuck green stuff away. Where would you like me to put them? Excuse me. It's moving them again, isn't it? How many more loads do you think you've got? Fifteen. <laughs> Think of the figure. Well, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Somewhere. Are you going to build it now? Well, no, because we'll block our entrance and exit out, won't we? And get rid of all that plastic. Right, I'll do that later. cultivator for 20 pounds a day but you do have to be reasonably fit they can kick about a bit just call me mr rotivator changing rooms the show that inspired trading spaces is back with all new shows off you go thank you i'm taking full responsibility the coast of home makeover shows is back for a new series changing rooms tuesdays from april 1st on bbc america I believe this lady is way too old to be wearing a skirt that short. I'm sorry, this outfit does resemble one of a streetwalker, at least cover the tummy. <laughs> if you have big boobs and a big tummy, don't wear a tent, because then we never see any shape at all. Your best friends won't tell you what not to wear. But we're not your best friends. And we will. So watch What Not To Wear on BBC America. Premieres Tuesday, April 1st, only on BBC America. Is wet again. Go now. I mean it. Ow. Off you go. Do you think they really know what they've let themselves in for? I'm doing me. What is this on the ceiling? Ground force and changing rooms. Weeknights from seven Eastern, four Pacific, only on BBC America. it out, turn it over, and knock it, Miss Rennie. Any roots, pull them out. Okay? Yep. You carry on for a while. We're about just over halfway through the first day, which is always a nerve-wracking time, which I'm never quite sure whether you've got to get done or not. Charlie's up here what you might call selectively weeding, because we want it to look not neglected, but intendedly wild. What are you taking out? All the grass. And things like stinging nettles that are going to be a bit of a problem. I know they should really have them, that for the butterflies. But well, we can leave one club. Yeah, otherwise it'd be too much. So, uh, so. Got some nice stuff here? Yeah, the fumar tree is beautiful and there's a nice heart trees there. Really pretty. Now when you're laying turf, you always work on top of what you've just laid. That way you firm it, but you don't do it with your feet, you do it with boards. So that the weight spread and firms it evenly. Okay. And then your feeder passes you the others. Um, it's like laying bricks. You want to stagger the joints. What you also need to do is to lay it slightly over the edge of that first turf so that when you push it in like that, it gives you a really solid joint. You don't want to have to start pouring compost or soil down into these joints. It's really not necessary if you do this and butt them right close together. And you just, like Ernie Wise's wig, can't see the join. 
Turf is great. It transforms a new garden very quickly. The downside is that good turf is ten times more expensive than quality grass seed. The wacker is hired locally as well. This really compacts the ground and rubble too as a base for the lower patio. Full mark, please, Charlie. Yeah, okay, okay. The next layer of the patio base is a dryish mix of seven parts sand and gravel mixed with one part of cement. After spreading with the spade, it'll get compacted with the wacker. I've seen a bit of Mary on the video, but I don't really know what she's like. What do you think she's going to think? Because I always worry halfway through. Either we're not doing what people want or whatever. What's she going to think? She'll cry, I think, actually. Because we're oh. a pathetic family for crying. Are you really? Very sentimental easily family. Easily moved to tears? Yeah. He's very easily. Move that turf easily over there. <laughs> <laughs> All of it? Yep. Well, very quick with that mix, you know. Well, we got this one spread and you came back with another. Well, this will probably be a little bit smaller. <laughs> It's always, always important, you know, at moments like this, just to sit down for about 20, 30 seconds and look at it and, and realise that you're really enjoying it, really. Yeah. Isn't it, Tommy? I said, good idea to stop and realise how much you're enjoying it. You're very good at that, Helen. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what do you reckon? Good afternoon. <laughs> it's amazing. Have we done it now? I didn't think you'd get this far today. Well, you get it. I don't think we did either, actually. I can't think about this uh, lawn bit. Yeah, you can see all sorts of things there. Um, it's all very nice. But you did say when you came home... I did, didn't I? Yeah. Right, I'd better get changed. Well, she's been doing terribly well, so you can come and take over from there. Well, actually, it's about time she did some work around the house. <laughs> right. Go on, well, then. Yeah, I just want to take it all in. <laughs> We've got enough watchers with Alan Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I get the message, man. You know, builders are ten a penny. <laughs> right, I'll, uh, I'll go in and do the honourable thing then. What's that? Make a cup of tea? Well, I could do that, couldn't I? Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> The sleepers have now arrived and are slipped into position. A bit more. That'll do. The concrete beds underneath help to ensure that they end up perfectly level. Look at that. Spot on. Charlie's doing a bit of haunching to hold them hard, while Tommy switches to the lower patio, laying out slabs to see what it'll look like. <laughs> Right, we'll run a border of these stable blocks in stretcher bond, which is long ways, all the way around the edge. Right. Uh, and then we'll also run them across the middle and dissect it into four separate squares. Right, yep. You know, the flag of St. George, be lovely. The art of it with this is to try and get the right man in, so you don't have to keep picking these, these big heavy beasts up. Uh, by laying these wet like this tonight, this should be gone off ready tomorrow. She's falling slightly from front to back to take the water off. Yeah. Yeah. Round the front, Hello, can I speak to you, Mary? Rob's calling Mary and stringing her along with a real flying porky pie. Mary, hi, how are you? Not so bad. Uh, it's been a bit of a tough day today. Uh, it was a fairly horrible drive up from Southampton. It's hot and sticky and the traffic was horrible. But how's your day been? Yeah. Have a good day tomorrow and uh, I'll see you, what, about five o'clock back, uh, back at Rockland. Okay. Bye then. Bye. <laughs> you big sinner. <laughs> <laughs> he just finds it amazingly easy, doesn't it? Yeah, a complete liar we have here. How have you managed to get her to, uh, you know, stay away while you... Well, she, do, she doesn't like staying in the house on her own. She hears noises. Mm. And uh, the, the, the trick was for, for me to get away, but also to get Sinead away. Um, so we managed to set up that Sinead was staying with a friend in London who'd flown over from Ireland to stay with her sister. Mm. And uh, that did the trick. It's so complicated, <laughs> I know, isn't it? it? It's a web, isn't it, of deceit? <laughs> oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. Great. <laughs>
good day. I was looking good at the end of the first day. Fantastic, yeah. Mm. Please. Well, I'm looking forward to getting my hands dirty tomorrow. That's the I stick shall, everybody's given me. I shall believe that <laughs> when I see it. <laughs> Tom, I think you've earned a, a slightly and a glass of something pleasant. <laughs> Right. Your best friends won't tell you what not to wear, but we're not your best friends, and we will. If you're going to be a fashion victim, at least use a fashion that suits you. So watch What Not to Wear on BBC America. Premieres Tuesday, April 1st, only on BBC America. Stay tuned for more Ground Force. Have you got a price for matte coated SRA1? If I can't see you, I can't hear you, Dan. Just tell me, will you? I, no, I can't hear you. Just, I'm right here. Speak Just to me. tell me. If you want to speak to me, and give me a ring, okay? on voicemail. Leave a message. Hi, it's me, Gareth. Uh, I need a price on Matt Cote. Uh, oh, this is stupid. Yeah, it is. It's stu this is stupid. It's so... Sorry, mate, what do you want? Uh, I need a tonnage price on Matt Cote SRA1. So I've got 160 down here, but I'm sure that isn't right, because when I spoke to Grim earlier on, he... Right, I know you're not there. The show the San Francisco Chronicle describes as the funniest thing you're likely to see all year. The Office, Thursdays, 1020 Eastern and Pacific, only on BBC America. In the cold light of dawn, we're back, trying to complete Mary's dream wildlife garden before her return at 5 p.m. First job, trimming the turf into shape. Yeah, out, and I'll come up with you. Okay. Morning, happy right. already. All right. Where have you been? Oh, I didn't realise you'd be here so early. <laughs> Alan, what do you say? Oh, wonderful. It reminds me of that old music hall song. Get down off the gas stove, Granny, you're too old to ride the range. Do you remember that? Oh, a bit before my time, <laughs> that one, Alan. That's going to look great, like something from the Old West. Wonderful, it's coming together. You all right? There, and a hebe down here. What we're doing now, apart from falling over, is putting about the bones of the garden, sort of the basic structure, which is why I've got these trees. Chosen very carefully, A, so that they, they look almost a bit wild and British native, like birch and field maple and white bean but also trees that are not going to be a threat to the house. They're far enough away, relatively light root system, don't cast too much shade. And when we've got them all out and we can see some kind of structure, then we'll get them in and start fleshing out the bones. Now you may think this is rather close together to be planting birch trees, but birches, more than any other tree, look really good when they're planted in groups. So I'm doing here a triangle of three of them. You end up then with three lovely silver stems to one head of branches. Works a treat. One by one, Tommy's blunting all his saws on the sleepers. The old poultry feed is going to have water in it for the birds to bathe in, so it ought to be level. <laughs> Halfway through the second and final day, it's that uh, moment of high anxiety where you wonder if everything's going to come together on time. It does get pretty nail-biting. Himself here, shoveling concrete, as ever. How are you getting on for time? Don't talk about time, please. <laughs> but you have to with it. Yeah, it's taking shape now. That's nicely mitered, I like that. Yeah. Thank you. You can come make one for me. <laughs> um, sadly, though, Sinead gets all the rotten job. She's basically clearing up. Very good with plastic bags and pots. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let you plant something in a bit if you're good. Oh, Ricky. <laughs> it's beginning to look good though. The bones are coming together now, and down at the bottom, the master of the house is sorting out the cooker. All right. Yeah. I've confession to make though. Well, I was cleaning it up and broke the end oh, off. Lord. Um, 
so we'll have to do a bit of fixing around. That was the chimney. Yeah. 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 Fix that back on. yeah, I think there's a bit of wire around here and we'll, we'll fix it up. And, uh, but I don't want Mary coming back and saying, what's up with my cooker? Exactly, yeah, that's got to be right. Brute force going on here, beating the ground into submission. Oh, You're right, Charlie. Absolutely rock solid here. I've got half the old building oh, on. It's looking good. When you get that white beam in, it'll be cracking. Yeah. All we're going to do is to try and make the rest of the earth around these trees look something like now. <sighs> Wildlife gardens need wild flowers. You can raise them from seed or buy plants from a specialist wildflower nursery. What you mustn't do is take them from the wild. For many species, it's illegal. These are jacked by the hedge, um, but in our case, they're jacked by the fence because we haven't got a hedge. So we're making a drift of those to come through here. What I'm trying to do with these cowslips is to bleed them through from the border uh, into the lawn. So I've just taken that little divot, it's made a little hole, and it's a case of squeezing the root ball and prizing them in so that they look as though they've been growing there forever. With any luck, a little cowslip will look almost natural. I thought this would be rather fun. I found three flag irises, so I'm putting them in this sombrero, which is going to fill with water for the birds anyway. And if I put a bit of gravel over them, stop that earth from rising, they'll enjoy their feet in the water and their heads in the sun. The afternoon wears on at a hideously frightening pace. A pile of logs is a haven for creepy crawly wildlife. Most of them are on our side, friendly bugs that eat insect pests. And in Charlie Sands, even a pile of rotten logs becomes a work of art. Rob said he wanted to get his hands dirty. Now he's getting his chance. Spray painting with heat-resistant exhaust paint saves time, so on to the bird boxes on the cool east-facing wall. Now, let's fix up that water butt, essential to any environmentally conscious gardener. Waste not, want not, as Granny used to say. And those hanging baskets are certainly going to need regular watering. This wet concrete screed will hopefully get gravel bedded in it, if there's time. I've had what you might call a quick wheeze here. It's always good on site to be flexible and prepared to change plans. I've been walking up and down here, as has everybody else, because I want to keep them off that turf, because you never go on turf too quickly after you've laid it. And what I've discovered is actually a rather nice little tiptoey path going around through these trees. It's going to save on plants if I bark it with chip bark right the way around, it becomes a woodland path. Hope she'll like it. We'll know soon. She'll be here in less than an hour. It's only 10-2. Yeah, she's early. She's 10 early. minutes, so... It's well, done, anyway. Where are we, I think then? Hmm? Where are we going? Around by the bins. Where are we going? Around the back, by the bins. Could you go in it? Yeah. you get her at the front door? Okay. Um, bring her out to the French windows and we'll duck in here. Is that my wife? Hey, Hi. Oh. Uh, Hi, how are you? Hello. Mm. We've, been, we've been doing something. Do you want to come and have a look? Really? Because we, um, we've always wanted to do something with gardening. Yeah. Well, guess what? Surprise! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind. We've been a bit busy over the past couple of days. Oh. <laughs> what have you been doing? Oh, we just potted about a bit. Check out, really? I know we tell you. Oh, Grace oh, over London. Tell her off. Yeah, Grace over London. Grace over London.